What would I say to my younger self? Maybe we don't need nobody else. Yeah, we all we need in God as a bag, baby. Yes, these be young. What I say to my younger self? Oh, baby, we don't need nobody else. Cause we all we need in names, got a bag, baby. Yes, these. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to episode nine of the I Am Music podcast. I uh, wanted to make this episode, you know, kind of a a special episode because for some reason this thing kept popping up on my feed, right, about the brown and black, that there were tensions again or something in Compton or something like that, right? And I think I watched maybe one or two of them, and then I didn't really uh, get into the other ones, but it kind of brought back things for me, right? And by no means am I pretending to know about the politics or anything like that but i can tell you personal stories that i have from a very unique perspective right uh you know grow growing up like in the 90s and um you know i'll share a little bit about my unique experiences with that which is funny because i honestly thought that by now it would have all been done right or it wouldn't have by no means been as prevalent or a topic of conversation as it is I, I, when I started seeing all this stuff. I don't know how it started, you know, stupid YouTube algorithm or whatever, why it started putting that up on my feed. But, um, you know, back then it, it was really, it was still really segregated, right? We didn't have uh, social media, this and that. So if you didn't know people like personally, um, you know, like you didn't really have those connections, right? I was lucky that I think, um, you know, I was just always a very open person, right? I wasn't born here. I was born in, in Mexico. I came as a little kid. Um, I think early on, I already witnessed like racism and stuff, right? So I didn't take to it. It was already something that bothered me, right? So I was first generation here as as well as my family, right? My immediate family. We're all first generation, so we didn't have that. Unfortunately, it is kind of like a dumb mentality from even like Mexicans that are already here, right? Like whether the ones that were already here that called themselves Chicanos or this or that, like they already had more of a racism installed mentality than, than you know, someone that comes fresh from Mexico, but not not 100%. So I'm going to get to that too, right? I'll just tell you my story, whatever. And, you know, if you have the attention span... You might find it pretty interesting. If not, um, you know, it will tie in like some of the gang stuff too, right? But um, so, you know, when I was little, I had my first encounter. Oh, let me tell you this. This is the interesting thing. One day even, right? Because for those that know, like, uh, you know, I do acting has been my bread and butter for, you know, a while. Even though, you know, sometimes, yeah, I still had to do other stuff when it got slow, right? Like um, whether working, you know, and security installation or this or that just other side jobs right but for the main part you know it's been pretty it's been pretty great to work in that industry right in the entertainment industry because there's so many side things so many side jobs right you could find different things right so anyways um you know i was working on set one day right i don't know what tv show it was and uh it might have been i think all american right that tv show all american or it's on netflix whatever it's on right and this black guy comes up to me and he's all, hey, he's like, hey, how come Mexicans don't like black people? And I was like, what? Like, out of all people, I was like, like, why did he come up to me and ask me, right? Like, I mean, you know, I guess I have like a more, you know, open, like, you know, I, I get that, right? Like, just the other day, I was literally talking to a physicist, right? A physicist that graduated from Harvard. That was like all this thing, right? And, and you know, we had a conversation where here I am even teaching this physicist a few things about things that science hasn't been able to quite prove yet, right? So just to show you like the vast amount of things that I've studied in life, right? I'm a student of life. So in case in case you, you don't know exactly who I am, right? So that's the best way to describe me, a student of life. So anyways... Here, he, this, this black guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, he's like, how come Mexicans don't like black people, right? Maybe I had already been being cool with him something. And I was like, 
like, what are you talking about? I was like, shoot, like one of my closest friends was black and growing up and, you know, I have like, a, like, I don't have a problem, but go ahead. Tell me what makes you think that. Right. And then I guess he, you know, he dated a girl and this and that and that and this. So I gave him a different perspective and I think that helped him understand it a little better because he seemed very satisfied with my answer. And so I told them that, you know, for example, in, in Mexico, like one of the worst insults you could call someone is like an Indio, which here would translate to native, right? Like a native person. But because over there, like they were thought of like, you know, native people being dark skin, right? Like, uh, like I have an uncle that's like, like Yaki and they're like, you know, most of them are really like dark skin. They're the ones I've seen, right? Just because, you know, it's it's a de they they live in a desert environment, too. I think while well, a huge part of that population um is like in Sonora, right? Sonora is like thought of to be very desert. Like, did my light go off? I think my light went off or, or something. Or I didn't have it on to begin with or something. It just tripped me out. But I guess this light's working, so I'll just keep going. So anyways, um, what do you call it? Uh, so, yeah, I was like, you know, in Mexico, like calling someone there's a lot of racism right in that sense right like you you call someone an indio and that's like um that's like the huge insult right like that's fighting words like i stay indio or whatever right so usually already when you call someone in their head it paints that picture of uh of uh like that right like someone dark skin this and that right but even that to me personally right like my my grandma looks straight like native indigenous right um you know, she already passed away, but my, my grandma, right? And my grandpa on my mom's side was very light-skinned, right? So even that, like my mom said, when when they were going to get married, the my grandpa's mom didn't want him to marry my grandma because, you know, she looked native, right? So there was even racism in that, right? Because I think my brother did all that DNA stuff that he has, like, um, my grandpa was like part Greek, right? Like my great grandpa was Greek or something like that. And and so they came out more light skin, right? As they were mixing on my grandpa's side, they were coming out more light skinned. And so my grandpa was light skin. Um, and they didn't want him to marry my grandma, right? So there was that racism just because she was darker, right? That's it. She looked native, she was darker. So that's what it was, right? So even when I was little. I know this is going long, but it's going to be a story, right? So anyways, um, when I was growing up, I remember I was in elementary and an uncle came and he, you know, it was funny because he was dark skinned, right? And, and we went to some place, you know, where we go walking, not exactly a park, but like a place where you, everybody goes walking and stuff. And as we're walking, like, you know, this black guy passes by, you know, running and, uh, he's like, He's like, oh, good morning and whatever. And then we're like, good morning, whatever. You know, I was in elementary. And then uh, my my uncle turns to us like, you know, with the, like a, a face. He goes like, oh, he goes, oh, un negro, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what the hell? It didn't even make sense. Like, is there enough population in Mexico for someone to have that reaction, right? And uh, see, so obviously I was like confused. I was like, what? And then he even asked me, see, because my parents didn't instill that in me at all, right? So neither of my parents, not my dad nor my mom, both raised in different parts of Mexico, didn't didn't even instill that in me, right? To where I was confused, like, damn, what? And then he's like, oh, dude, is there a lot of black kids in your school? And I was like, yeah, I have black friends. And oh, he's like, how are they? And like they're good like yeah so that was really my first first exposure to like racism where i was like like you know and it was the 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 odd thing about it is that you know like i said he's a dark man right so it tripped me out right and then later uh in junior high oh and then let me tell you this though see in elementary see you know because i spoke perfect english because you know I came when I was four months old. They brought me here. So I was learning English and Spanish pretty much simultaneously. Spanish was my first language. But, you know, Disney Channel, whatever. By the time I was in school, I was speaking English and Spanish the same, right? Maybe English already was starting to surpass because I was being exposed to more English, right? So then all the cool kids, you know, they had the ESL classes, that e English as a second language. And a lot of the cool kids that were already born here, 
they would call it like the other kids web bags, right? So I was like, what the hell? So so then they were confused because I chose to go kick it with the ones they called web bags, right? And they were like, what the hell? I remember that, like them being like, because I didn't like that. I was like, what? Like, what? What? You know, to me, it was like, we're all Mexican, we're this and that. Like, I didn't understand, right? It just didn't click in my head as a kid. So, you know, with the the ones they called web bags, like we'd be over there playing soccer, whatever, this and that. So that's who I was kicking it with. So that was kind of actually, right? Like first the thing with my uncle, then being exposed to that. So it was already seen racism, our own people against our own people. So that was kind of my first thing before even the brown and black issue, right? So then after that, in junior high, I had this crazy experience, right? I, in seventh grade, you know, it was already junior high. Um, you know, because where I went, it was first through six was was elementary. Then junior high was just seventh and eighth, right? So it was my first year of junior high. You know, there was this in this PE room. Um, I, you know, one day I was, you know, I was going to the PE locker to change or whatever. And there was, you know, this black kid right there in my way. And I go, you know, I was really, you know, I had good manners and stuff, right? Um, I was like, excuse me, you know, whatever. And then. I guess he wasn't hearing me. So then I just try to squeeze on through, right, to get to my locker. And I guess I, I slightly bumped into him, right? Because I'm telling you, I was trying to be careful, like, just to squeeze through because he wasn't listening for whatever reason. Then I accidentally bumped into him, you know, but I'm saying, like, just a tap. And then um, then he jumps up, and like, all crazy, dramatic, right? And he pushes me. But like that, right? Like, I barely bumped into him, and he jumps up, and then he pushes me. And then I push him back. And then, you know, I guess we're like yelling at each other or something. And then and then uh, people come and they separate us. Right. So. All right. Cool. Then after that, you know, we had the nutrition, which is the same like a recess. Right. Ten minutes. And I'm sitting I'm there by myself. Right. And I didn't for some reason when I went to junior high, it was like all my old friends. It was like, I don't know, maybe I didn't have them for classes or something. And, and so, you know, I didn't. I had to start rebuilding friends, right? So I was standing alone under like this tree where they had little benches right there. And then there's like, dude, it looked like a scene from American Me, right? There's like seven to 10 black kids coming towards me. And right in the middle is like a good friend. I still remember his name and everything. He was like a good friend, right? So like seven to 10 black kids coming towards me. And then, the you know, my friend's the one that's talking. He looks like the leader of the bunch, right? And he's like, he's like, hey, man, uh, you know, that kid had said I called him the N word, right? With the how they say it, with the what is it, the hard E R or something like that? I don't know how they say it, right? But they like he said he's like, hey, he said you called him the N word. That ain't cool, more blah, 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 this and I was like, what? I did, and he was like, he wasn't even letting me talk. So I don't know what if he kind of put 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 like a thread, like oh well, you know something like, and I was just like wow, like, but as soon as they start walking away. Like, I didn't realize there was, like, this Mexican kid standing next to me. And, uh, like, uh, it's funny because I still remember his name. His name just popped in my head right now. And his dad, I think, was a veteran or, you know, I don't know, a veteran at that point. But, you know, he was part of a gang. And so this dude, this Mexican dude, like, hey, man, don't worry. We got your back. Da -da -da -da. I was like, what the hell? Like, so, you know, I wasn't even really, like, you know, we're growing up around. It was, like, infested with gangs where I was growing up. But. Like I wasn't really a part of that culture, right? I didn't, I didn't have like that, like a dad from a neighborhood or an uncle from a neighborhood or nothing like that, right? Like my friends, my like best friend's house was like the worst house in the neighborhood around there, um, you know, like so I was exposed to it there, but not like to know like certain things, right? Like politics or nothing like that, right? I didn't know all that, like those ins and outs, right? Like. I didn't know like people that who was beefing with who or who this and that, like for the most part. Right. I didn't knew the two main main gangs because like that. Right. They were always shooting at each other or whatever, stuff like that. But anyways. um, So, yeah, I was like, what the hell just happened? Right. I was really. It, you know, it, it hurt me that they didn't believe me. Right. I remember feeling that like, what the hell? Like I was so confused because I didn't do nothing wrong. Right. And then whatever, I would see this kid in freaking recess and or I mean, when I was going to P.E., right. And then I was just like, whatever. Right there, I just I just didn't get close to him. But he even had this smug look on his face like 
like whatever. But he was a liar, right? To me, I looked at him like he was garbage because he was like, I like this little pudgy bastard. Like that's all it took. So that's a good lesson in life, right? This little pudgy bastard. Like all he it took him was to say a lie, and he could have caused tension. See, he didn't know that even people were willing to have my back to start a little whole race thing, right? Like maybe they were more aware of this already, right? Of the of the race situations, right? But Later on, this will reflect also life, right? Because then when I was in high school, right, there was already starting to be like, there will be full on brawls of like brown against black or this. And I think even like at my time, there was even like Asian uh, like groups that were fighting, like maybe Asian against black or Asian. I don't know about Mexican. It was Asian against Mexican, but certain things were starting to happen like that. Right. But brown and black was always kind of an issue, even in high school. So then, I, you know, I ended up getting kicked out of high school at one point and uh, I had to do community service. Right. And uh, I remember when they were driving us around, there were two veteranos and they were talking to each other. Right. And I happened to hear their conversation and they're talking about about um, like the, the whole brown and black thing. I was like, what? I was tripping out. And then they were talking about how it had been something from prison that came out. So it was a conflict that had started in a prison and it came out. And now even kids that weren't even involved in the gangs were, you know, so all these rumbles and stuff in high schools and this and that, like people didn't know that it had all started from some conflict that had happened inside a prison. It came out and I was just blown away. So I was like, wow, that is like, it doesn't even make sense that civilians are getting involved because they don't know where it came from. Right. Some Someone started the thing where it's just a beef between whatever, whether it was a business thing or whatever happened. And that's how it came out. So it blew my mind. And why it blew my mind, the power of someone that a prison could influence, you know, inside a prison could influence out. Right. So it was pretty interesting. Then I looked at it differently. Then just being at that spot at that time, being already someone that was very aware. Right. I, I was very conscious of things happening. Uh so I was like, oh, damn, like, that's crazy, right? Um, so after that, I right, to not, damn, because I'm sure I'm making this story way long. But, you know, like I said, I, I have a lot of personal experience with this. So then in high school, I had started rapping, right? And, you know, when I used to go to ditching parties, this and that, we had this black friend that, you know, I had heard him rap. And I was like, oh, wow, like, this guy raps good. But at that time, like, I think I was barely starting or something. I would hear him freestyle or or, or do stuff, right? So then, you know, after I would rap and, you know, be buzzed already, you know, I started drinking kind of early in high school, whatever. So I'd be buzzed and freestyling and people, you know, I had a good friend that told me, hey, you should write your stuff down. So once I started taking it seriously, the rapping, I was actually trying like I had, you know, like Cholo homeboys that like, oh, you know, so and so rap. So first I was trying to find like other people, like, you know, I guess Mexican people to rap with. But um, I don't know. You know, I didn't have that style, right? I grew up listening to Tupac. I grew up listening. And that's another thing, right? There was a time when just because the environment, I started seeing the racial stuff. I wanted to support my own. I almost felt like, am I supposed to be like racist? You know what I mean? Like, am I supposed to? Because, you know, like, hey, unfortunately it is, right? Like, uh, like monkey see, monkey do kind of thing, right? Like we were, you know, we kind of get formed by our environment. So at one point, but then it just didn't make sense. It was like, I listened to Tupac. I listened to this. You know, I didn't find enough. Like there was like Kid Frost, the Mexicans, you know, Cypress Hill was like a gray area, right? Like, I don't know. You know, it didn't really like, you know, that's that's just how it was, right? Like a lot of like brown people, obviously that's like, that was like the heroes, right? Cypress Hill. But at the same time, you know, was whatever. If we bunch them into that, then they were part of like, like that circle, right? Like, uh, so that th we didn't really have a whole lot of things, right? So I, then I was like, ah, well, I tried, but then I just, whatever. I was like, it just doesn't make sense. How can I say like, oh, I don't like this group of people, but I'm this, over here bumping Tupac. So even as a teenager, I had that much common sense, right? Like, you know, just like Tupac, he shared a story when he's, oh, there's one white dude, you know, I hate, hate black people tattooed everywhere, but then he asked them for his, his autograph, right? So to me, I took it a step further. I'm not even going to act like I don't like a group of people and I'm over here bumping their music. It just sounds stupid to me. To me, it was like just plain plum dumb, right? To, to even say that, right? So I was like, wow, I guess I don't, right? I guess I'm not I'm not cut out to be, 
to have that racism, right? <laughs> like, I, I just wasn't cut out for it because I was still going to be bumpy Tupac. I was still going to be bumping MC8 or NWA or all this and that, right? So anyways, you know, as a kid, I had that common sense. So anyways, you know, with my friend, like, we started, um, you know, I, I was going around. I didn't really do the, the like, the Chicano rap thing, right? Uh, I was still willing, like I was trying to, right? I was trying to, but, but, uh, it was just a different style, right? I didn't, I was, you know, and I had already been exposed to more hip hop too. So I liked hip hop, gangster rap. I was more like, you know, um, yeah, it just, it was just different, right? And they would even make fun of like, even that, right? Like the, oh, like, oh, you kind of sound black, you know, like this and that. They're like, no, no, it's good. It's good. It's just funny. Like you kind of sound black, that kind of stuff, right? I, I would get, so I was like, all right, whatever. So then I went to my friend's house, the one that, that you know, we weren't good friends, but I knew him, like I said, from ditching parties or hanging out, like, uh, with different people I knew, right? And, um, you know, even then, right, there wasn't, like, a lot of black people that lived in the neighborhood. Like, even when we were kicking it, it was like we had the one white friend, the one black friend, the one Asian friend, kind of things like that, right? And then the majority was, like, Mexican people, right? Um, So I went to find my friend, and then... I rap something for him, he rap something for me, and then boom, we um we came together, right? But you know, even then, right? By that time, you know, I dressed more like a cholo, this and that, right? He looked more like, you know, like a thugged out, you know, black guy, right? So once we started kicking it together, like it was weird, man. It was like that's how strange it was at those times. It was like uh like the whole room would stop when we would walk in somewhere. Like people were like, what the hell? What is this like Cholo looking guy doing with this like black thugged out looking guy? Right. It was like, it was crazy. Right. So that's how uncommon it was at that time. Right. Before social media, you know, I don't even like, you know, YouTube probably wasn't even around yet. All that stuff. Right. It was just that weird. Um, You know, uh, damn, there was something else that popped in my head right now but let me let me just keep going so anyways with that right like we started we started coming together because of the music right but even that right like there were some people that were like oh i had my own good friend that was like oh what uh, he's gonna make it but you're not because he's black right and i was like oh damn so you know we had like um i had like my own people like like this scene right and then even at one point right i was driving it was like and this was years after already, but it was like um, I was I was driving and then my, my black friend was riding shotgun. And then I had like three Mexican friends in the back of my car. And there was this Mexican dude that I knew, uh, you know, he was a cool friend, this and that. I knew him from high school. And he's like, I don't know, we were at a party or what. And then he's like, and then we were like in the in, in somewhere, I don't know, or meeting up. And he comes up to me, oh, hey, man, I think that's messed up. You have a you have a black guy in the front over your people in the back and I was like I was like what I, and you know I think I cussed him I, I was like dude you you're freaking like stupid right or something and you know after right I, like I I I I realized why it was because you know he, his dad was from a neighborhood see and in that time like that there was like the brown and black gangs they were bordering so th I think it was like that like one week you know uh someone from the Mexican gang will get killed the next week someone from the black gang will get killed like or sooner than that right they were at war right so this dude happened to be like his dad happened to be from you know one of those neighborhoods that would feud with the black gang right um I found that out after right um cuz you know it was like bordering whatever so I realized I guess his dad had had fed his him with the same mentality, right? Well, he didn't know when I was like, you know, F you. And after that, we weren't friends anymore. Was that this black friend, you know, one day when one of my own had pulled out a gun on me. And, you know, I was stupid. So I was still like, I was talking crap. This black friend jumped in front of a gun for me when one of my own people was pointing a gun to shoot me. And he just stands like that, right? Like six foot something tall black guy just jumps in front of me, like probably completely blocked me, right? And he's like, nah, like, you know, he's like, oh, no, nah. like that's not, it's not going to happen, right? Um, Like basically, right, if if he's going to shoot me, he's going to have to shoot him first, right? That kind of thing. And I think even that guy was like, what the hell? So 
this idiot that's telling me over here, why am I letting a black guy sit in the front over my own people? They didn't realize that this person had jumped in front of a gun for me. So even after that moment, was I ever going to be racist after that? Unless I was an idiot, right? Like, unless I had no freaking brain, then I would be, you know, like, how could I ever be like, oh, yeah, I hate black people or something like that, right? Like, that's the only reason I was probably still alive, right? Because I remember, too, when... You know, this person pulled out the gun. I was like still talking crap, you know, whatever, whether I was buzzed or whatever. But even sober, I would do stupid things like that. Right. I just didn't care. You know, it was almost like, yeah, maybe at, at those times right when we're young and we got something to prove. It's like we got a death wish in a way. Right. Like or we just don't really care. Right. There's some of us that, you know, like are just knuckleheads and we really don't care. So I was just like, I'm backing down. And once he jumped in front of that gun, then I realized like. I think it even shocked me. Like, what the hell? Why would someone do that for me? Like, like, you know, like, am I worth something? Like, what what the hell? It didn't, it didn't make sense, right? But anyways, you know, so that was the thing, right? So I was like, like, my loyalty was not going to waver because of some idiot trying to tell me, like, why am I letting a black person sit shotgun over my own people, right? Because he didn't know, he didn't, he didn't realize, like, who he was talking to and the things we had been through together. At that point, right? So, um, you know, even making the music, right? Like making the music, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, even that once after, right? We we were doing songs already and everything. I had tried, like that's when some of these Chicano rapper labels were starting to get, you know, they were growing, they were growing. So you could tell they had a lot of potential and they were doing good. They were already boom, boom, boom out there. So like I said, since I had already connected with them from before when I was trying to look for people to rap with, I ended up kind of reconnecting and, uh, you know, they were offering us to to like to like sign us. And, you know, I guess there was already money flowing because uh, I even said, well, hey, you know, I want this much up front and this and that. And they were like, yeah, cool. No problem. So I was like, what the hell? But even that, like, um, you know, even the dude that was offering the contract, he was like. He was like, hey, um, well, check it out. This is what we'll do. We'll release the album, but we won't put your homeboy's picture on the cover. So that way people don't know that he's black until th once they like him, then it's too late. Kind of thing. I was like, what? So just to give you context of how, how the brown and black tensions were back then, right? Like even that, to not want to put someone on an album cover because... um. You know, just to kind of trick people into first, you know, so it was just crazy, right? Even though it, that's why those kind of times, that's why I thought by now they'd be done because it didn't make sense. You can't be over here bumping, you know, now I've seen like bandas that have collaborated with like, you know, those that do like corridos and they've collaborated with Snoop Dogg or Ice Cube. And I'm like, you see, like, so some people got it, but others just like stay stuck in that prehistoric mentality and I get it it's politics whatever I'm not gonna pretend to know about that like I said I, I was privy to when I was a kid hearing two it that I was having a conversation in front of me about you know I probably never even talked just because that's our culture right like like uh you know but since it's coming up again you know I, I always I felt good when I started seeing you know the new kids and they had such a bigger variety of friends right I know yeah some of you like I even that, right? Like, even all the years, like, that I was rapping with my friend, like, I never even used the N-word in a song, right? Like, I, that wasn't my style because I was always very culturally aware. So I was always proud of my culture, and I kept that. But, you know, it's just we came together as, like, you know, it's beautiful to be able to learn from other cultures, right? So let me let me just go. So so with that, right, they gave this, this offer, but it was like they weren't going to put my friend on the cover so i think what i told my friend i didn't want to tell him that because i was like damn how do i tell him like hey well we got this offer i even asked them for money up front and they'll give it to us but they're not gonna put your cover on the cd because of that right so i was just like ah you know what i don't know if i told them that like ah you know it's just like all these fools are fresh out of like you know i think a lot of them were coming out of out of prison or out of jail and so a lot of them had that mentality like when I went over there to kick it with them by myself, because I took my friend at one point over there, right? We kicked it with them. Everyone was cool. But just that, like, how are you going to be like, oh, we're going to put out the CD and not put them on the cover, right? Uh, 
So I think I just, I went more that angle. I was like, ah, well, you know, you could tell, like, you know, a lot of them don't even like black people, right? So it's like, why? But more like the pen, you know, pan jail mentality, which I, I face later too. And I'm going to share that story right now before before I bring this to a close, right? Um, So I think it was just more that angle. Ah, let's just keep doing it. Or, oh, I probably said like the style. Like, ah, well, you know, they're going to do more of the Chicano rap. That's not really our style. If we get boxed into that, then we're going to be stuck with that. So let's just keep doing like our different way, right? Like, like, and even at that time, right, we kind of had a bone thug style, but we had, we were versatile, like, like, you know, like, like even, even anyone has listened to my music, you already know, like I've, I've done like every style imaginable, right? That's why it's called I Am Music, right? Because everything, I've done everything, right? I, at one point it was like rock, hip hop, I did straight rock, I've done R&B type stuff, you know, boom, 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 whatever. So he was the same way, right? Um... So it was kind of that, right? Like, oh, let's not get boxed into this, right? And so, you know, and even now, I remember one of those Cholo dudes, like, saying, like, um, because at that time, there was a group that came out, and it was a brown and black guy, right? I forgot their name, but they had a hit song and everything. But then one of those Cholo dudes was like, well, look it, man, a lot of people aren't accepting them. Like, it's just the truth, right? Like, I get it, boom, 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 that's your homeboy, you got, like, you know, but hey, like look at that group. Yeah, they came out with that hit and then they faded away. I don't know if he even told me like he knew them or something, but he was just like, like, he's like, hey, you see what happened, right? Like the people aren't ready for that, right? So I was like, damn, all right. So so it was like talking like the truth, right? So you can't really deny when someone's like saying the truth, right? I guess they just weren't ready for it, right? But to me, it is what it is, right? It was my homeboy. Like I wouldn't by no means be as good with music if I hadn't started rapping with him, right? But you know the tension, and like I said, even on the on the on the black side, right? Like there was like I remember once we went. I don't know we, we were, you know. I guess it was like a crip hood, right? Because we had gone, and it was funny. I think it was when we were getting like our album cover done. We were going to the place that they were doing the album cover for us, and we stopped at a liquor store. And I was like, I wait in the car, and my friend went in to get some forties, right? We always used to drink like forties of old English or whatever. So he goes in and he's kind of taking long. So when I go in, I see him like right there at the register. And there's like four or five crib dudes like looking at him like like they were about to rush him. Right. And because he had these like they were like these pants that were they look like dickies, but they had this thing that literally looked like a red rag hanging out of them. And I had told them because I already knew I was like, dude, like, damn, man, what's up with those like. They looked like stylish, right? They were more like like dick like that, like dicky style, but a little more stylish, right? You know, and then they look literally like it had a red rag, like a this red triangle, like as a pattern on it, but it looked like it was coming out of a pocket, right? Like a red rag. And his lady had given him those pants. So I was like, you know, he liked them, whatever, and they look cool, whatever, right? Like stylish and like, you know, like gangster but more like with with a little more style right like that and um i already had told us something right and sure enough here's these dudes looking at them like they were like what the hell like what is this fool like this fool's really and right when i walk in i was like hey what's up man you ready or what and then they all just like what the? they literally they literally did damn near like the scooby thing like like the right like what the hell like what? like they, it, it's like I'm telling you, man, we would walk into places and everything would just stop, right? It would just be like, boom, like, what the hell? Like, and everyone was looking at us like, like, you know, like, so th that's how they, you know, they were like, what the hell? Like, so even then, like, why is this dude hanging out with this cholo looking dude? And they just stopped and that was it. And we were able to take off. They didn't even approach us. Once they saw me with him, like, they just stopped and then we were able to mount. I was like, oh shit, like, damn, these fools are about to like, you know what I mean? So you know, that's how it was, man, back then. So just to say, right, but when you have friendship, right, like um, I was always worried about that, right? <clears throat> Here's something ironic. If you want to hear something that's crazy. One day I was kicking it at this at this homeboy's house, right? And, uh, you know, sure enough, like it was in that neighborhood where where that one dude, what that one friend came up to me. Hey, why do you have a black guy in the front, you know? It was in that hood, and I was kicking it at a friend's house. It was probably like 2 in the morning or something. No, no, no. That was another. I'm thinking of another. But we're chilling right there, right? Probably in the night drinking. And this one black dude comes up, and, you know, he's look, he's dressed more like a like a 
essay cholo, right? Like not like that. And like, what the hell? And and then I guess he had just gotten out of prison. He had done like 10 years or something. And he's, you know, he's, um, you know, he, he he's from that neighborhood. And I'm like, what? And then he, he's, so then my brain like, damn, I have so many questions. I'm like, how the hell? Like, it was just the craziest twist. Imagine that this dude with the whole reason he even told me something because his dad was from this neighborhood that supposedly didn't like black people. But then here it is, like this one guy. And I was like, really? Like, you're from... He's like, yeah, he's like, I know, I know, you know, but he's on. Uh, I think he told me the politics, too. I forgot what he told me, like, about when he was locked up, if he had to run, like, you know, he had to make a choice or who he, he had to go with, whether he he kicked it with the black people, but people knew what was up or what. He got into the whole thing, but I was just blown away because I was like, dude, the irony, like, life is funny. And, and everyone from that neighborhood respected him. They knew who he was. He had mad respect in that neighborhood. Obviously, right? He had just, I didn't, I don't think I even remember if I asked him why he went, why he was locked up for 10 years, but he said he had just got it now. So I was like, oh, damn. And I told him that because, you know, back then I think I was, you know, I was young, right? Like I didn't know too much about the stuff, but I knew enough to know like, damn, what happens if like, okay, well, let me finish the story. So anyways, I'm asking him all this stuff like, damn, like about like even the politics about it. Like how, who do you run with? Like how, how does it work? You know, like, because I always thought like, damn, what, what if I got locked up? Like. You know, am I going to have to, like, be, like, that's not my friend anymore or what? Like, you know, I was just curious. Like, I didn't know nothing, right? So I'm asking this guy all these questions, right? So anyways, um, you know, uh, yeah, it was just mind-blowing, right? Just this, the crazy irony that this guy talking all this crap. And then years later, I run into this guy that's from that neighborhood and he's black. And it's like, you know, it was just mind-blowing, right? So, um. What do you call it? Uh, what was I gonna say about that? Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Well, whatever. So, anyways, yeah. Boom. We we had so many crazy experiences, right? Eventually, you know, I ended up leaving to the Marines because we we were trying to make it with the music. It just wasn't, you know. And it, even that, right? In the mil in the military, you get to see all these different cultures come together. So then it's another layer to that, right? Like you really learn to put all that racism stuff aside, right? It doesn't. It's non-existent, right? It's like even the religious stuff, right? Like, you know, because how they say there's that one thing. There's no atheists in foxholes, right? Because if you're in war and there's bullets flying by and whoever you're in that foxhole with, like, you don't care what religion they are. Well, I mean, the saying's different, right? Like, you all believe in God, right? But And it doesn't matter. So even that, right, to think that an atheist all of a sudden believes in God it, while when bullets are flying by is the same, right? You don't think about racism. You're not thinking about all that other stuff when you're in life and death situations, right? So I guess that was kind of one of the things, you know, when you're growing up in a certain environment and you're and you're not, you know, you're not backing down, you're not punks or whatever, then you're going to face a lot of things, right? But so anyways, after that, let me just share this last story and then I'll, I'll um, you know, I really want to drive the message. So anyways, that was the beautiful thing, right? Like I said, obviously, right? Like this friend, um, had my back, right? Like, he had my back. I had his back. And so, you know, we faced a lot of things, but it didn't matter. We didn't, we, to us, we didn't look at the whole racial thing, right? Like, we didn't look at the racial thing. Um, You know, like I said, all the songs, like, that I did, even with that, right? I was very proud and aware of my culture. So, it wasn't like I was trying to be, like, you know, this or that or or nothing, right? And he wasn't trying to be, you know, oh, I'm Mexican or nothing like that. We were, we were very aware of our own cultures, but we came together. And, and uh, obviously the music was better because of it, right? Everything, you know, all these things, right? And uh, it's different, right? Once you become like it, this bond, like you fight like family, right? You don't you don't take crap from people, um, you know, all that stuff. I, I got it, right? And And I was always like... Right. I wasn't as evolved because it was funny even after. Right. All my homeboys got into neighborhoods and different neighborhoods and this and that. But I just it none of that even made sense to me. Right. Because I was like. um, You know, I was always aware of certain things. Right. And I wasn't I didn't see the sense. I didn't really ever want to be involved in anything that I'm going to be hurting my own people or nothing like that. Right. So it didn't it never really made sense to me. Right. All the gang stuff. Um. But, you know, obviously when you, you're growing up 
in a certain thing. Obviously, having a, a black friend as one of my closest friends, you know, that the music brought us together. I had to grow even more. I had to be even tougher than a lot of because see other people you deal with the regular stuff. But in a way, it kind of saved us, right? Sometimes it, it did bring more drama. Sometimes it saved us, right? So it was kind of like it balanced itself out, right? Sometimes people were so confused by it that they were like, what the hell is happening here, right? And they left us alone because they were more like just confused, right? Um, but all that, right? So let me just share this last story, right? Uh, I hope I hope that that made some kind of sense. Just that, right? Like, like those loyalties are more important than anything else, right? And you're willing to die for them even right so to me you know i would have died for that friend um you know to have his back over any cultural thing or anything like that is it's a deeper bond right when when someone's willing to jump in front of a gun for you like how could you not have loyalty for them right and be like screw it even in my own people and imagine that already i saw one of my own people pointing a gun at me about to shoot me so so that that whole construct like dissolved instantly, right? It didn't even matter about that, right? I wasn't bound by that. That freed me. So if you want to talk about breaking chains, that freed me from that kind of mindset of of um you know of of ever having that. Like, oh no, well, I'm Mexican, I stick to my own blue to blue, all this stuff, you know. And then, you know, seeing the irony after. So anyway, let me share the last story. Even that after, right? You know, there was a time when I was, you know, hustling, right? So there was this friend that I knew that I, from from those times, um, you know, this black friend I had. I had left to the Marines, and when I came back, uh, this friend hits me up. He's like, hey, man, uh, and I happen to be around, right? And he's like, hey, you know, come down, like, you know, go roll with me or whatever. I was like, all right, cool. I don't know if he had already told me we were going to go to studio or what, right? But first he took me to meet this friend. And he's and he gave me a heads up. He's like, hey man, this guy doesn't really like Mexicans, right? He don't mess with Mexicans because he just got out of prison, right? He did like eight years or something. And he's not, you know, he was into the politics. He was with the, you know, with the business in in the when he was locked up. So, you know, I guess he had some encounters where he didn't really like Mexicans. So the only reason I was able to to um get up in there was because my homeboy, you know, was vouching for me, took me, right? So, um, you know, he kind of ran with like DJ Quick's people, right? So, so that was kind of like the click he was doing songs with. So after that, we ended up going to studio, right? And I was the only Mexican there, right? I was like, damn. So it was that guy's song out of all, it was, they were working on his song at that studio. And that studio happened to be DJ Quick's old, it was like DJ Quick's old house that he sold to his homeboy. If you guys know Player Ham from the... If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. It's sugar free, and then Player Ham on that song, right? And Player Ham was on a bunch of um DJ Quick stuff. If you know the all the old DJ Quick albums and everything, right? So it was his house now, and DJ Quick studio stayed in there, right? Like, like the studio never was uh dismantled or nothing, right? So you know, so I was the only Mexican guy there. So they're recording this song, and I just start writing stuff, right? Cause my homeboy had already given, hey man, this is like you know. This could be a chance, right? Like, boom, boom, So I was like, all right, cool. So I had my, my, you know, my notepad ready with my pen, whatever. So then they're like, all right, who's next? So right when they said, all right, who's next? I'm like, oh, me. I got something. Boom. I just, like, kind of, like, muscle my way into the booth. And they were like, you know, they had room for four people, right? So it's like, like uh, I think two of, like, Player Ham song, uh, Sons are on the song, the guy singing the hook, and then some other guy rapping and then i i took another part right so so i'm in there and i'm rapping and then when i come out the booth you could tell that guy's kind of little well you know like oh, or before i even went in he's like oh well you know it's got to be like really good or something like that so i go and do my verse and when i come out like there's this young black guy that's like hell yeah like he, you know he he like dabs me up he's like man that was dope that was funny because i think i said something funny right then there's this like oh older black guy, right? Like this OG right there that's like, yeah, man, he's all that's he's all that's what's up, whatever. He's all, you know, legends have recorded in there. He's all easy e recorded that, you know, easy e recorded in there. Scarface from the ghetto boys, Tupac, DJ Quick. I'm just like, whoa, I just got to record in the same booth as Easy E, Tupac, Scarface. I'm like, 
you know, DJ Quake, which is my favorite producer, right? I was like, no way. Like, dude, this is insane. And so, but yeah, even that guy, right? He kind of is like, he, he didn't really want me on the song, but everyone was showing me props, right? I don't know whatever happened to that, that album he was working on or what, right? But this dude was like that, right? He didn't like Mexicans, this and that. But luckily, like my friend took me. Whether they use that, I don't know whatever happened, right? Um, I think Player Ham's sons went by the Young Giants or something like that, right? Like after that, I, I didn't know. I lost contact with my friend after, right? Uh, I don't know if he got locked up or what happened, right? After that. And then, um, you know, I think social media wasn't really, it was barely, I don't know even know if YouTube was around. It probably was around already YouTube. But I don't know if they even had MySpace. Maybe MySpace was already out or something like that, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know what happened to that song, right? But I was happy just that I got to experience that. But just even then, right? Like, it was, there's always been these tensions, right? And even then, right? It, it was something that came, this guy had that mentality from prison. But there, that was this other homeboy, right, that I had that, you know, this other black homeboy that I knew. And we were, like, super good friends, right? We were, like, good, good friends, right? Like, damn, that's crazy. Like, I, I wish I could find them now. Maybe I'll try to to see where that homeboy is, right? Because I haven't talked to him in a long time. Really good friend. Really smart, too. See, I think that was his story. Like, when he was, I'll just share this real quick. Like, when he was young, they wanted to skip him, like, two grades even. And his mom didn't let him do it. And they held him back. And eventually, right, like, like he got caught up in trouble. He went up, he f got into the system pretty young, right? He ended up getting in trouble because that's what happened. He was too smart. He, his brain needed to be challenged. He got bored. So what do you do? Like, you know, like they say, idle hands are the, the devil's workshop, right? So, you know, I think after that, like it got him in that pattern, right? So just to show you, there's all these things in life, right? That we experience. I don't know if any of this made sense, right? But I just wanted to talk about that because, see, I've always seen from when I was young, right? I was around this stuff, right? And it, it's kind of crazy to me that that um that gang stuff could could uh you know it has such a huge impact, right? It affects the world, but when it affects civilian life, it's just crazy to me, right? Um, you know, not to say that you know we were civilians in that time, right? Obviously, right? Like I wasn't um claiming no hood or nothing, but. You know, you're growing up around that environment. Obviously, you have to be tough. You have to stand your ground. Even that, right, when people, um, like, to me, my lo loyalty was above any. I wasn't going to back down from any neighborhood, right? Like, in my homeboy, if someone was disrespecting him from, like, any hood, right, I would have had his back regardless, right? That's how we were. That's how we were, right? Like, it was, like, it was non-negotiable, right? And I think most, most anybody as a man, right? I can't speak about anything as a man or a human being. Like, there really is no bigger thing, right? Like, like, and I'm I'm happy, right? That that's so far removed now from my life, right? Like, if anybody knows, right? I got my spiritual podcast channel, right? <sighs> that's more my walk, but this thing, I, I guess, I just kept seeing it. You know, I'm happy to have been able to survive, right? I'm happy to. And, you know, maybe that was the time, right? Like, maybe it wasn't even about the music. It was meant more for us to to keep each other alive, right? And, you know, like I said, I my life took a different route. My friend, right, he went, started a family, this and that. I think at the time we actually stopped because then I kind of had an opportunity where at that time they were signing a lot of like, you know, like, like that, like Latino hip hop artists and so I told them it was going to be, we agreed on it, actually. It was going to be more like how Eminem went and then he did, came back and had D12, brought all his friends along. So it was like I had an opportunity after, right, where I was going to do it. And then uh, and then after bring him along, too, once I got signed or whatever, because I think Universal was so signing a lot of people. But then reggaeton came in and screwed everything up for, like, hip-hop artists, right? It was like. Then they were trying to, because I had that same thing. Someone was trying to make me do reggaeton. I was like, dude, I don't do reggaeton. Um, you know, all that stuff. So, but that's aside from the point, right? But that's kind of when we started parting ways, right? It was kind of like, uh, you know, and then I left to the Marines. And then it was like, I'm, you know, whatever. We went our separate ways. and But uh, maybe it was just meant for us to keep each other alive, right? Um, during those times. And uh, yeah, you know, it's crazy to survive those times, right? And then now, I, but that's why it's crazy to see that thing. 
I'm hoping it's just that, right? I did, like I said, I didn't look into it too much, right? I just saw a few videos about it, but um, hopefully it's just gang stuff. Hopefully people don't get sucked into it. Like I'm saying back in those days, like, damn, it would even influence kids in high school, this and that, where you're having brown on black rumbles all from something that came out of a prison. So it's more gang stuff, more that kind of politics. So hopefully it doesn't get to that level again, right? I think I haven't seen it pop up anymore. So hopefully it was just a, a quick little thing. You know, like I think it was saying like in Compton or something. Hopefully it was just politics from some neighborhoods. And and then everybody decided to make videos about it, right? I mean, I'm making a video about it too. So I can't really, you know, say anything. But um, I think some people were trying to push it too, right? Even, on, you know, whether on the brown or black side or both, right? Some people... Love the drama, right? They're drama queens, right? Supposed to be grown men, but they're drama queens. So they'll be like, oh, you look, look, the Mexicans are trying to get the black people. Oh, look, look, look. You know, Mexicans, you know, gotta, gotta um do this, right? There's always someone trying to start drama. And a lot of times they're not even the people that are out there like that, right? On the front lines that are actually living it, right? Like I know I lived through, you know, a lot of stuff during those times. And, and um, like I said, right, like, for me, I got to see a different part of it, right? Like, you know, like I said, even that, like without that bond, right? With that, the music brought us together, I probably wouldn't have even been alive. So you never know, man. It's like that, like in life, right? Like maybe you're someone that hates white people or this and that. And hey, it might be that white person that saves your life or or vice versa, right? You're a white person that, oh, you know, and the same, right? You have a black friend that saves your life, a Mexican friend that saves your life, right? So even when politicians are over there talking crap, think twice, right? Because one day that culture that maybe someone's trying to promote for you to dislike might be the one to save your life, right? Or even especially like military people, you'll get it at some point if you don't. You know, I remember when I was and then I'll end it, right? Even when I was in when I was going through boot camp, I had this cool white friend, but I guess he had grown up where it was just I don't even think he had really been exposed to Mexicans, right? And he said this, the most racist joke, right? And I was like, what? And I, I like, and he's like, oh, sh like, he thought it was normal. That was the thing, right? And I was just like, I kind of snapped at him. And he's like, oh. And after he even tried to come apart, hey, hey man, oh, I'm really, I was like, hey, man. Like, and then that's it. We weren't friends anymore. My choice, obviously. He was really cool, really cool, um, really cool guy, man. But you could tell. Like that, he just thought it was normal. Like he was so surprised that I got so offended by his racist joke against Mexicans, because it must have been <laughs> it must have been like a super racist joke, right? Where I'm saying, like, even in elementary, I didn't kick it with all the the Mexicans from here that stuck their nose up at, at the other kids that they called their own people wetbacks just because they were, you know what I'm saying? Like, since then I had that that awareness of like very proud of my people, very proud of my culture. And I didn't kick it with all these friends I had. You know, once we got to a certain grade, maybe by fourth and fifth grade, they were starting to be like that, like, oh, wet bags and this and that, right? So by, because I think at first everyone, you know, that's the thing. See, when you're young, everyone's so pure and innocent and, and you just kick it with where, check this out. Even once I remember this girl I was dating, her cousin was in locked up. So we went to see her. I don't know if that, I think they changed it, right? I don't know if it's still like the the woman's jail or whatever. We went to see her cousin, right? I went, we're right there waiting. I remember in the lobby, it was like crazy. It was like out of a movie. Like you can't even make it up. There was like a little Asian kid, brown kid, white kid, and and black kid all paint, playing together in the waiting thing. Like all those moms were locked up or something and, or something. And there's all these kids in the waiting room playing together and it's like what the hell that's how it is see when your kids they don't see the color they just hey there's another kid let's play let's play right and uh i was like wow so i witnessed see that's what i'm telling you i'm very aware i'm like oh always like whoa like if that ain't a sign from god or a message from the universe right like like here are the all these things right like so that's how it is even at elementary till you you get to a certain grade and then it's like oh then people are starting to get more introduced to the racism. Like imagine if my uncle had a big influence, but he had came to visit from Mexico, right? So imagine if he had that big influence, like teaching me like, oh, black, like, and I don't even know why, like, 
Like, I don't even think where he lived, there was any black community for him to have that prejudice didn't even make sense to me. Right. So, so just that, right. I don't know where I was, what, what else I think I, I cut myself off from another thought I was having, whatever I could keep going over and over. But I think that's the perfect message to leave, right? When we're little, we don't have that stuff, right? Oh, yeah, and the Marines, right? Like that white kid that, that uh, you know, he made that racist joke. And after he, like, just by my reaction, he was like, oh, shoot. Like, I thought I saw his reaction. Like, he thought it was normal. It was okay to say those kind of things, right? Um, And after, like, he tried to apologize a couple of times, but I just, that was it. I, I, I didn't kick it with him, right, after that. But like I said, he was a cool guy, right? I felt bad, but but it was it just I was like, damn, what the hell? You know, I didn't really like um all that racism thing. I think I had even done already songs at that time that were all pro like my people. So you know, so it was stuff like that, right? So I'll end it with that. Hopefully, like I said, hopefully it doesn't become a thing again. Right? They're always trying to separate people and everything, man. Like in life, they're always trying to separate everyone. Hopefully, people have more. In the age of information where you could Google stuff and this and that, it doesn't have to be like that. The only way we'll move forward in life is together. You know, um, I've collaborated on songs with, China, you know, a Chinese person. You know, even that, like Mexicans and Salvadorians were always not supposed to get along. And I had great Salvadorian friends, right? Like, you know, all this stuff, right? So, you know, I've collaborated on songs with Salvadorians, Chinese, Black white uh everything right like every culture right so that's a beautiful thing about music too is if we're smart we don't see color we see talent right so we go by that we see the talent and um yeah there i don't i don't even know if anyone stuck around to see this far of the video i'm sure it's gonna be like an hour long but i'll end it with that hope you guys are all well peace yeah and if you want to talk about the in the comments whatever you're someone that's aware of all the politics by all means like I said, that's not my area of expertise. I could just talk about like what I've seen, what I've been around. Yeah, things are recurring cycles, right? Until we break them, right? So that's more my perspective, right? Like I've lived a fuller life being able to integrate with different cultures, right? I've had friends from all walks of life, you know, ethnicities, different things, been in, you know, whether music or in the military or this or that. Um, you know, I'll share this last thing then. Damn, I keep talking. Like when my brother passed away, people came from all over and there was everything, right? Like, you know, he was in the military 20 plus years. And when he passed away, the same, right? There were Chinese people, black people, white people, you know, Mexican people, every, every, all these walks of life came and I was like, damn, like, you know, he wasn't no celebrity or this and that, but everyone he was around, like he touched different people, right? Like, like and different people from different walks of life, ethnicities telling me like how much he meant in, in their life. So, you know, when I go out, if I get even the same thing, like I couldn't ask for anything better than that, right? Like, like that's how it should be, right? That people came from all these states, from Virginia, from even from Mexico, right? From from somewhere in the middle of the U.S. Uh, people came from all over to my brother's funeral. Is like, even that kind of snapped me into like, uh, you know, into a uh, wow. Like, you know, like there couldn't be anything more beautiful than that, right? And, uh, you know, it's crazy because he just came to me in a dream the other day. And, you know, Dia de los Muertos is like in two days. So it's funny. I think that's the best way to end it, right? With that that reminder from my brother, you know, you know, when he, after he departed, all the people he touched and, and, and all these different walks of life. Like, damn, that's that's like a a, a, a good way to go, right? Like a, a great way to go, knowing that you impacted people, you know, from all over coming from like. The four corners of the U.S. coming together to to come, you know, to pay their respects, right? So I'll end up with that. Hope you guys are well. Peace. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, sometimes you're just feeling it, you know what I'm saying? You're just feeling it. <laughs> and I want to feel this way forever. Yeah.